and everybody in the audience is getting reeled in and they can't believe that they are seeing this performer live. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. We got a doozy for you today and it's actually my most requested artist to react to and that of course is Dimash. World famous, critically acclaimed. I gotta be honest though, I've never actually heard Dimash sing before. Never heard a performance, never heard a recording. It's really only come from your comments. So I know how famous Dimash is. I'm really excited to listen and to learn and to analyze today, but this is a completely blind reaction. I really hope I pronounced that name right. Let me know in the comments how I did. Dramatic. Okay, we've really set the scene. We've got these dramatic doom, doom. We got smoke. We've got percussive instruments playing in the background. Something big's about to happen. I was not expecting that voice. So Dimash is a countertenor of sorts. The term countertenor we use a lot in the Baroque world, and that is a male singer singing in the higher register, so singing like alto or something. It's not really fair to say that Dimash is a countertenor. From what I've read in the comments and everything, I know that Dimash sings a lot and, you know, he's got a really nice belt and has an insane, insane range. I think that's what he's really known for is having this incredible range. So it's not fair to call him a countertenor, but in this song, he's singing in that range. It's called falsetto. And I know many of you have heard that term before, and it's really singing high in our range. What actually happens are the vocal folds go from more of a square shape to more triangular. So the point and area of contact for the vocal folds to buzz together is smaller, so the tone is a little breathier. It's so nice. I really, I really am liking this so far. As we do in these analysis and reaction videos, we figure out why we like a particular performance. It's not enough for us to just say, oh, I like them because they sound good. Mm. Mm. No, let's figure out exactly why. And I think I've pinpointed one reason why Dimash is so, so good. All we've really gotten so far is an ah vowel, because this is kind of like a vocalese. He's singing this melody, but simply on an ah vowel. And what I appreciate is that even though the pitch is going higher and it's going lower and kind of fluctuating, the mouth shape doesn't change simply because it doesn't need to. In this instance, when it's just an ah vowel, it doesn't benefit him at all to change mouth shape and to move his jaw around, remove his tongue. He gets a position in the mouth that works and that sounds good and he keeps it consistent. The only change in movement that should be happening is in the lower abdominals, in the support system. I know for a fact, there's a lot going on below the belly button, the lower abdominals, and not much needs to happen up top. We've got an even breathier tone in that moment. There's a lot of air going through the vocal folds and they're partially closed, but we hear that breathiness and it really adds to this kind of dramatic effect we've got going on. There's a bit of mystery happening with all the smoke. We don't really know what's going on yet. An important vocal technique moment that we need to talk about. I like the breathy tone as a vocal effect. 
but if it's ever our default voice, then we have a problem. We should have our vocal folds coming together cleanly, producing a clean tone. If your default voice is breathy, we gotta work on it. But if you can use it as a vocal effect, as Dimash is doing right now, it can be really, really effective. I really like this camera angle because it shows a power pose. And we often neglect posture when we sing. If this mechanism, the body, that that's where all the singing happens. If it's not in the best position, then we're not gonna sound our best. Let's break it down. So we have wide shoulders, which means that our lungs and our ribs can really expand nicely, taking in lots of air. We've got relaxed hips. Lower abdominals can release into that pelvic floor. Lots of support there. That is what we need. And finally, a strong connection to the floor. You want to feel grounded when you sing. If your weight is on one side, if you're leaning on one hip, mm -mm, not gonna be so good. If you feel connected to the floor, I promise you, your singing is going to improve. So many good things in this voice. It's clear, it's breathy when he wants it to be breathy, and there's a good amount of vibrato in there that's keeping him really in tune. Vibrato is a result of good airflow, and if you start to hear a little bit of vibrato sneaking into your voice, that's a good thing. But if you're ever manufacturing it, and I say this all the time, if you're doing something with your jaw, or your tongue, to make your vibrato happen, please stop. It's fake vibrato. I see it, I hear it all the time. Dimash does not do that. If you wanna sing like him, don't do that. I like the physical movements as he sings those high notes because it makes his voice really consistent and it's easier for us to sing those higher notes if we have a little something to give us that extra bit of support. He's doing it for dramatic purposes, but it's also helping with his vocal technique. I often have my students throw an imaginary frisbee when they're singing high notes because it helps them with their support. It's never a bad idea to incorporate some sort of consistent physical movement in your singing. I get my students sometimes imaginary paintbrush or you can spread peanut butter on toast. Ah. Something that is a consistent movement to help with your legato singing. Legato is the Italian term for smooth. In other words, we don't ever wanna stop our flow of sound. And Dimash, again, for mostly dramatic effect, is moving his arms like this. And while that is dramatic, I love it, I think it's great. It's also helping with that smooth singing that we always want. I wanna make a comment on the stage presence of Dimash right now. It's a very dramatic performance, but he's reeled everybody in. Everybody's eyes are just glued to him. They can't believe that they get to listen to him in the flesh. But also, he's just got such a pure, beautiful tone. The posture is really wide and everybody is just being reeled in. They just can't get enough of this guy. As I mentioned earlier, I have never heard this voice before. Ever, not even once. And what is blowing my mind the most is the exceptional level of vocal control. It's difficult to sing in such a high range, but people can do it. But what's separating Dimash apart from other voices that I've heard attempting to sing up there is the control, is the clarity, and the power. That's incredible. I've heard a lot of counter tenors in my day, but this singer 
is by far the best. And to say Dimash is a countertenor is, is incorrect because he sings such a wide range of musical styles and in different registers and all that stuff. But this truly is a special voice. So thank you to the hundreds of you that commented in all my videos saying, please react to Dimash, please react to Dimash because I've just experienced it for the first time. And we've done that together, which is great. I honestly hate to keep stopping, but this is a reaction video, so it's what I have to do. I'll link the full video in the description. You can watch it after. But one tiny detail that often gets overlooked, and I think it's part of why Dimash's high notes are so, so spectacular, is that he's not under singing the preparation notes. We just heard da, 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 and then there was a spectacular high note. What he's doing really well is he's not under singing those preparation notes. He's actually using them to launch him into that high note. Let's listen one more time. What we sometimes do when we know there's a high note coming, we can see it in the distance. I, I know it's coming. We save ourselves for the high note. So we under sing the preparation notes in order to try to sing the high note to the best of our abilities when we should actually do the exact opposite and really sing those preparation notes. And that's what he did, of course. That was borderline whistle tone. We are getting up there. And again, there are people, there are other singers that can sing that high. But what separates Dimash is the clarity, the tuning, the control, the tone quality. I'm hard to impress sometimes, but that was good. He just demonstrated something that not many people can do, and that is to pull back the volume to almost nothing, but to stay on the voice. To have that amount of vocal control is pretty astounding. And in order to do it, you need to move your air at an incredible rate. So we need to take a nice breath in, and then we're using that support and the air is spinning so fast. It takes a lot of skill to be able to do this. And while I acknowledge there's a lot of natural talent in this voice, let's take a moment to appreciate how much dedication, how much hard work has gone into this voice to get it where it is today. And it's not just work like, oh, I'm going to sing every single day. It's detailed work. It's intentional work. It's careful work. And through that dedication and hard work, we get this voice. Please, I need your help with more Dimash videos to watch, to listen to, react, and analyze, because I think there's more we can learn about this voice. There's more we can learn about why exactly it's just so good. That's it for today's video, my friends. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. And if you wanna watch more, there's actually a video about to pop up on your screen in about three seconds. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video. Oh.